Hi guys. It is a little bit cloudy and gloomy, but an otherwise pleasant spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this Friday, April 16th, 2021. And the little dog and I, we have got to start packing up for our big trip back to New York, baby, kicking off on Monday morning, packing up here in the rain this weekend uh, but before we start that arduous task doing what I do every Friday here at Collapse Chronicles and that's heading over to mongabay.com for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where I simply check in with Rhett Butler and the band of uh, band of whatever you I don't know I'm not ready to call Rhett Butler a, uh, a doomer quite yet. We're going to see what Rhett is on Rhett and the boys and girls minds this week as they detail the latest barrage of assaults against this collapsing planet unfolding this week. So I'm going to put the little dog down. He has got his new bath. He is bathed and ready to go to meet the girls. All right, Brett, what's on your mind today? Not too much apocalyptimism and hopium in here today, a little bit. But we're going to start off, and again, guys, I don't have time to get to all of these stories. Um, <clears throat> okay, I love this. This is an interview with this fellow named David Kamowitz. David Kamowitz describes his career as a, quote, 30-year quest to understand what causes deforestation. Yeah, so we're going to uh, summarize David Kamowitz's 30-year quest into less than 30 seconds. David if you want to understand what causes deforestation, perhaps you want to look in the mirror. It is humans, humans, that cause deforestation. It is chainsaws. It is bulldozers. It is dynamite. It is gasoline and matches. It is palm oil. It is cattle ranching. It is illegal mining. It is humans. If humans had never come along, there would be no deforestation. Well, maybe a few beavers. So I hope I, uh, I hope I helped David on his 30-year quest to understand what causes deforestation. But we're going to go from rainforest to. Uh, coal. Yes, I said there was not that much hopium and apocalyptimism. We are at a tipping point with coal. Yes, we are certainly at a tipping point. Uh, I guess they're tipping all of these uh, giant conveyor belts are tipping into dump trucks and coal trains. Anyway, I'm not going to insult my own intelligence or yours. Okay. Good Lord, there's a lot here. All right, you will be shocked to see we have a complete turnaround in the Philippines. Yes, a complete turnaround. Now, guys, this is a corona panic story. So, uh, for those of you who do not want to hear about how the C word is anything but wonderful for this planet, either put me on uh, hold or uh, put me on hold or come back in five minutes. <clears throat> President Rodrigo Duterte has lifted a ban on issuing licenses for new mining operations in the Philippines, making an about-face from a previous anti-mining stance 
that saw him ban open pit mining in 2017 and close 26 mining operations for environmental violations. Yes, the government says the mining industry, which contributed a whopping 0.76% to the Philippines GDP in the year 2020, is important in resuscitating an economy bogged down by the corona panic by generating uh, revenue and jobs, blah, blah, blah. So guys, uh, this excuse for reviving the economy, you know, so uh, from all of these economic shutdowns, uh, the planet eaters from the Philippines all over this planet are now using the Corona panic as their bullshit excuse to gut all environmental regulations, to overturn mining bans, plastic bag bans, uh, all of this, the planet eaters are taking full advantage of the to use resuscitating the economy as their excuse for gutting environmental protections all over the planet. Uh, anyway, uh, the mining sector was the deadliest in the world for environmental and land defenders in 2019, according to Global Witness, the Philippines has the most mining-related killings that year, and activists warn that the new order will further endanger defenders as well as open key biodiversity era areas to mining. Thank you to the Corona Panic. Okay guys, you can come back, those of you here who do not want to hear, do not want to hear that the Corona Panic is bad for this planet, you can come back to this rant. Uh, what is going on in the Andaman Islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean? Sea turtles under threat as Indian government weighs development in the Andaman Islands. The Andamans are a rainforested archipelago far off of east, the eastern India's eastern coast in the Bay of Bengal. Yes, but now the Indian government has proposed developing the island along two of the islands in the chain. If implemented, experts say the plan would pose a threat to nesting sites of leatherback sea turtles whose population globally is declining. Yes, the island is also home to the Onge indigenous tribe. Okay, guys, uh, I am uh, going to uh, read this apocalyptic knee slapper and then we're going to move along. Despite flaws, despite flaws otherwise known as unadulterated horseshit flaw. We have the unadulterated horseshit flaw. Yes. But despite that flaw, commodity eco labels Commodity eco labels contribute to sustainability. Yes, this post is a commentary and does not necessarily reflect the views of Manga Bay or Collapse Chronicles. Okay, uh, I know you guys do not want to hear the latest study about how the Corona panic has put the brakes 
on a thriving ecotourism industry. Uh, you know, this whole ecotourism, talk about a double-edged sword. Uh, in, 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 anyway, it's the... I, I need to do a, an entire ecotourism rant sometime. I am completely conflicted on, on the idea of ecotourism. Uh, but anyway, for those of you who are anti-ecotourism and pro-mining, pro-logging, pro-palm uh, oil, uh, you will probably be anti-ecotourism and pro-corona uh, panic. All right. We've already gone over this story this week. This is Manga Bay's spin on this story. Island species and endemics will bear the brunt if, if, meaning when, warming exceeds 3 degrees C. Endemic species on islands are at the greatest risk of disappearing because of climate change. A study has found in general species found exclusively in one region face a greater threat from a changing climate. Do you think so? Uh, places like the Caribbean, the Indian Ocean Islands, including Madagascar and Sri Lanka, the Philippines, and biomes like India's Western Ghats could be bereft, could be bereft of all of their endemic plant life in three decades according to the analysis. Meanwhile, introduced species could outcompete and replace endemic species in the world's biodiversity hotspots if, if warming continues unchecked. I love it when they ask a question in Manga Bay. Did you know? I did not know this. I did not know this until today. I like to learn one new thing every day. All right? And you're getting ready to learn something you did not know. Did you know that northern Tamanduas may eat up to 9,000 insects per day? Well, obviously, we need to eradicate this threat to the insects no wonder we're in an eco and an insect apocalypse. It's that damn northern Tamandua eating 9,000 of our fellow earthlings every single day. We need to uh, get out there and uh, eradicate the northern Tamandua and save the world from the insect apocalypse. All right, Belgium has stepped up to the plate. Belgium bans biofuels made from palm oil and soy starting in 2022. Uh, Belgium will ban biofuels made from palm and soil. Uh, joining Denmark France and the Netherlands is other European nations that have barred palm oil based biodiesel. Um, now, of course, it does not say if they ban those uh, what they're going to replace. Uh, anyway, I guess that's another story for another day. Okay, we have JP Morgan. Chase Bank. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank stepping up to save the planet. Let's give three cheers to J.P. Morgan Chase Bank <clears throat> for expanding their deforestation policies. Yes. J.P. Morgan Chase has agreed to expand its policies addressing deforestation after pressure from shareholders. 
is led by the investment group named Green Century Capital Management. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, all right. So how are they doing this? J.P. Morgan has stated its intentions to require all growers or refiners related to the palm oil sector who are its clients to confirm that they are compliant with the no deforestation, no peatland, no exploitation principles. There you go. Oh. Right. I am so glad J.P. Morgan Chase is getting tough. Yes. Uh, all right, that one's too complicated. All right, we're going to go over to Sri Lanka. And I think... This is a planet nibbler story and not a planet eater story. Farmers move to occupy a critical elephant corridor in Sri Lanka. This is the Diagala Wildlife Sanctuary in Sri Lanka, links several wilderness areas and serves as an important corridor for elephants. But a recently attempted land grab has raised concerns that this lifeline for the elephants could soon disappear. Yes. Uh, blocking the corridor could increase human-elephant conflict and it could also create socio-economic problems for hundreds of families who depend on nature-based tourism from the elephants. All right, we have uh, talked a lot about this last week. I guess this is this week's update. New palm oil frontier sparks scramble for land in the Brazilian Amazon. Cultivation of palm oil has surged in Brazil's northern state of Roraima over the last decade fueled by an ambitious push towards biofuels. <clears throat> While palm oil companies operating in the area claim they do not deforest the Amazon, hmm. critics say they are contributing to a surge in demand for cleared land in the region driving cattle ranchers, soy farmers, and land speculators deeper into the forest. Yes, as the demand for land increases, incursions near and into indigenous lands that neighbor palm oil plantations are also in the rise. Yep, yep, yep. Do you think so? Okay, uh, we have a story about how the World Economic Forum and the United Nations are going to save the planet from starving to death from a food systems summit. Yes. Um, <laughs> I gotta move on. Uh, you will not believe this, guys. This is why I depend on uh, Manga Bay to let me know. Uh, I never would have known this. And neither would you. You heard it right here on Collapse Chronicles. You never would have figured this out for yourself without Rhett Butler to explain it to you. <clears throat> Indonesia's net zero emissions goal is not ambitious enough, activists say. Indonesia, one of the world's biggest greenhouse gas emitters, 
has put forward a plan to achieve net zero emissions by the year 2070. Yes, the government say that is the most ambitious and realistic target for Indonesia. Yes, but activists and experts say the Indonesian government can do much more, much sooner, given that China, the top emitter, has a net zero deadline commitment for 2060. Yes, and going back to our tipping point for coal, they also criticize the government's plan for its continued reliance on coal as a primary component of the national energy mix over the coming decades. Yes. The plan also lumps coal gas of gasification into the basket of renewable energies. There you go. Oh God, we have a new invasive species in Florida. It looks like the Amazonian Arapaima showing up in South Florida. We'll see what this means. Okay, guys, just like the Indonesian story, you will not believe this one. It's kind of a follow-up to the story last week. Do you believe that European tuna boats are dumping fishing debris in the Seychelles Islands waters with impunity. Yes. Tuna love to congregate around objects adrift at sea. So industrial fishing vessels purposefully release thousands of man-made plastic heavy fish aggregating devices heavy fish aggregating devices into the sea every year to round up tuna. Yes, in the Indian Ocean, the European dominated per se tuna fishery relies heavily on dumping plastic uh, into the sea. Yes, and is largely responsible for the waste that collects on remote biodiversity hotspots. Do you think so? The devices are also partly responsible for pushing the yellowfin tuna stock to the brink of collapse. Yeah, this is the second story in a two-part series. Okay, what is going on with Brazil's environmental scientists and academics? intimidation of Brazil's environmental scientists, academics, and, and officials are on the upswing. Increasingly, Brazilian environmental researchers, academics, and officials appear to be coming under fire for their scientific work or views from the Jair Bozo Nero government. Yes, but also from anonymous Bozo Nero supporters. Yep, yep, yep. Do you think so? A range of intimidation is being experienced by officials, including firings and threats of retaliation for institutional criticism of Brazil's environmental agency and other environmental groups. Uh, says one critic, whose interests benefit from the denial of the data on deforestation, from criminalizing the actions of NGOs and environmentalists? What we are witnessing is a coordinated action to make it easier for agribusiness to advance into indigenous territories and standing forest. 
close quote. But anyway, guys, I could go on with this, but I see my buddies arriving, and uh, we need to load a canoe onto a truck. So I'm going to wrap it up here because I realize I'm talking to myself. But if you enjoyed uh, <coughs> Rhett Butler's hard work, uh, since Rhett some love by upvoting this video and you're welcome to uh, subscribe and contribute to Collapse Chronicles, I want to uh, thank kind-hearted uh, listener Stonewall for uh, joining the uh, exclusive club known as the Collapse Chronicles Patreon account. I do have a Patreon account at Collapse Chronicles if you would like to pitch in. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your own Chronicles of the Collapse while you still can on this cloudy day. Bye guys.